Hi, in this video, I want to tell you in short, my fibromyalgia story. So in 1994, in April, 1994, I had a motorcycle accident. I was 27 years old. At that time, I was working as a lawyer in the Avenue Louise in Brussels. And it was on that same street when I drove back with my motorcycle from pleading a case uh, in Brussels. I drove back to my office and I sadly had an accident, which was not my fault, but nevertheless, the consequences were very bad. Since that day, I was in pain. I've had many issues. I had stomach issues. I had digestive issues. I had brain fog. I had pain. I had pain every single day. And the doctors were just, they didn't understand. Now, now your arm hurts. Now your neck hurts. Now your legs hurts. Now your knee hurts. Now it's this. Now it's that. There's nothing wrong with you. You've got nothing broken. So I'm talking about 1994. They didn't know so much about fibromyalgia back then as they, don't, as they know now. And I got depressed. I also had post-traumatic stress syndrome. Oh, I had restless legs. My memory wasn't working well. Um, I was sensitive to light. I was sensitive to heat. I was sensitive to cold. Uh, I had problems driving at night. Suddenly my, my perceptibility um, the perception with my eyes had changed. Once I, I read a book, uh, it's called, uh, it's a French book, and it's uh, called The 100 Symptoms and Syndromes of Fibromyalgia. <laughs> and we went through that list and I had 99. But now I'm talking about 2008. So what do I mean with that? From 1994 to 2008, I did not know what was going on with me. Doctors didn't really believe me. Although I did have some brain damage from the, from the accident and they did want to declare me an invalid for some percent, uh, for a percentage. But if you are here because you have fibromyalgia, know that I understand you. Why am I saying this? Well, for example, I lost, well, I didn't lose friends, but my life changed all over. My, I couldn't work as much anymore. I, in the morning, I would go and plead a few cases. Then the rest of the day, I would be lying on the floor of my office because my body was just unable to do more. And then at night, I would work again to prepare for the next day. That's all I would be doing, less than a half time. And you are young. You want to go out. You want to do something and you can't. You want to make appointments with friends. You want to go out to the cinema or to a concert or to a restaurant. But by the time that that date was there, nine times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, I would be too tired to go out. I would not feel good to go out. I would be in pain and don't want to go out. Sometimes I had nausea. Then you don't want to go out. You just want to crawl in yourself. Don't move and stay at home. Many people did not understand that. They see it as a lack of respect. We had an appointment and you don't show up. So in the end, you don't make appointments anymore. You just don't. Because you know that more than probably you are not going to pull through. You are not going to go. So everything changes. Your work life changes. Your social life changes. Your private life changes. Your sex life changes. You can't do what you want to do. It's frustrating. And you're fighting. You're fighting all the time. In my case, I was fighting all the time to do things. I'm young. I must be able to do that. Fighting against tiredness. Fighting against pain. And then in 2008, 
uh, I had an accident with uh, one of the horses here and I broke my back. I broke my lumbar four and I was still working uh, as, as a jurist. So I was doing the same as a lawyer. I just wasn't allowed to go and plead. But meanwhile, I had moved to Spain in 2003. And so in 2008, I, I broke my back and I couldn't move for some time. And so my insurance says, well, now that you're at home, now that you can't do much, we are going to start doing some tests with you because all the problems you're having, it's not normal. So for example, I would be tired. Remember, I would be tired all the time. I would be in pain all the time. Uh, they would take blood of me. I would, uh, the, the other thing, I would have fever about a low fever about six months a year. Not all at the same time, but let's say two or three, four times a year for a month or longer, I would have fever, low, a low fever. And several times a year, they would do a blood check with me or on me. And everything was always okay. There was nothing wrong. So then they even believe you less. But when uh, I saw that one doctor who, who checked from the insurance, who checked on me after I, I broke my back, she says, we have to find out what's going on with you because all these symptoms, it's not normal. And it all started with that motorcycle accident. Meanwhile, it had been going on for more than 14 years. So um, she, she says, we, we have to find out. We, we are, you're going to go to a neurologist. We're going to check if you have multiple sclerosis. I'm going to send you to a, a rheumatologist uh, to see if you have uh, to eat uh, arthritis. I'm going to send you here. And I saw all the doctors you can imagine. I did all the tests and the MRIs and CAT scans and all everything you want to. And more blood tests and allergy tests and so on and so on. I went, well, we have something in my, in my, in my country that we say, um, King Dog de Mola. I went through uh, the whole system. And then, and then I ended up at a rheumatologist specialized in fibromyalgia who did the tender points test on me. At that time, I had never heard of the word fibromyalgia. I just went to a, neuro, uh, to a rheumatologist. That's all I remember. And she says, I'm going to do a test with you. So she did the test with me. And I was positive all the way. And so she told me, she says, you have fibromyalgia. I said, what? Fibro, fibro what? <laughs> so from there... Um, she prescribed me some painkiller. She prescribed me some antidepressants or some, I don't even remember. It's been such, such a long time. And I already had been taking medication before, but I don't like medication. So I always tried to not take it if I could because they also have uh, side effects. And so she says, I'm going to prescribe you some stuff and I'm going to enroll you in, uh, in, a, in a unit in another hospital where they will give you some teachings. I said, okay. So I went home. The first thing I did was I, I went on the internet and I searched fibromyalgia. What is that? So by the time I was invited to go to that special unit in another hospital here in Alicante, in San Vicente, I went there and the first lecture was an hour or an hour and a half about fibromyalgia. And I was there in the room with, I don't know, 50, 80, I don't know. 50 or 80 other people, other women. There was maybe one man, I don't remember. And they told us what fibromyalgia was. And some of these ladies were asking questions. Yeah, but what is this and what is that? And I was wondering, hey, I already searched all of that because I want to know. But it was a fact that the majority of the ladies who were in that room were all older. And every two weeks, more or less, if I remember well, we had a lecture of one hour or a little bit longer. And it was a lecture about how, how to relax, how to find a better sleep. Yeah, that's also some insomnia. Oh my God, years and years of insomnia. But so how to sleep better? What is fibromyalgia? Um, how to conduct yourself? How to change your life? 
And that went on, I don't know, eight or 10 lectures. And then at the last lecture, they said, well, that's it. I said, what do you mean that's it? Isn't there anything you can do for us to make us better? Oh, you go home, you take your pills, and you accept that this is how it's going to be for the rest of your life. I said, what? I went home and I was totally confused, maybe is the best word. I said, okay, I, I got all these lectures on how to relax, how to accept that I have fibromyalgia. Who gets fibromyalgia? Where does it come from? Bam, bam, bim, bam, bam, bam. And that's it. I'm not going to get better. I was 41 or something. And I had fibromyalgia since I was 27. And I had been suffering pain every single day for over 14 years. And they could do nothing for me. Now, you have to realize that during these 14 years, I did try lots of stuff. I did go to a physiotherapist. I did see a chiropractor. I did try essential oils. I did try acupuncture. I tried, as far as I know, I tried everything. I tried medication and nothing helped. And then they tell you, you go home, take your pills and accept that this is how it's going to be for the rest of your life. Mm -mm. That was not going to happen. I was not planning to live another 10, 20 or 30 or even 40 years being in pain every day and taking pills every day. So over time, I said, I don't want this anymore. And I thought of ending my life. If you have fibromyalgia, if you are in pain every day, you know what I mean. If you think you have tried every single solution and nothing is helping you, then at a certain moment, you just don't want to continue. And then one afternoon, I was lying in my bed here. I couldn't leave right uh, back then. And mainly it's the animals, the rescue animals here who also kept me alive and gave me the responsibility of taking care of them. One afternoon while I was laying in back, resting my broken back, I read an article about uh, an Amazon who had fallen from her horse, who had broken some ribs and who was able to leave the hospital the next day, although she had broken ribs, she left the hospital without pain. Without pain, wow, how did you do that? And so she talked about photonic therapy, Dr. Mark, uh, Dr. the McLaren photonic therapy. That's what she said. So she talked about McLaren photonic therapy. So I started to do a research. I researched all of this on the internet and finally I found Dr. McLaren. And so I wrote to him, uh, I always wanna go to the origin of the story of the origin of the therapy and find who is behind it. And so in this case, that was Dr. Brian McLaren. So I wrote to Dr. Brian McLaren. I told him all I was suffering from at that moment. Uh, so I was suffering from fibromyalgia. Uh, I had carpal tunnel syndrome for which I needed an operation. I had chondromalacia rotuliana in both knees. So that's runner's knees. And the traumatologist had already told me that I would need prothesis in both knees. And so I asked, and I told uh, Dr. Brian McLaren, of course, about some symptoms of my memory and then insomnia and so on. And he answered me straight back. And he says, well, listen, for your carpal tunnel syndrome, you just need a few sessions and some exercises and all will be fine. You do not need an operation. And for the knees, just use the torch to do the point. And he says, for the fibromyalgia, you will keep the name of the disease, as they say. But, but I can make it so with photonic therapy, McLaren method, how it was called back then, that your pain will be relieved and that you will get quality of life again. 
in the beginning, I was in doubt because, yeah, you see, you've, you've tried everything and nothing is working. And then this one says, yeah, it will work. Well, I had a choice. The carpal tunnel syndrome operation would have cost me a thousand euros and I would not have been able to use my hand for a long time. And his, uh, at that time, it was called uh, veterinarian packet. I bought that. It was uh, a torch and then uh, booklets uh, for, or a, DVD, a, a CD, a, a CD-ROM, the old system. CD-ROM uh, with uh, a small booklet for, or a small book, well, it was more a booklet for the dogs, the horses, and then the one for the humans. That was 800. I said, okay, at least if it works, thank God I don't need that operation. Uh, I will make money instead of spending money. And let's see what he's going to give. So when the system arrived, I just did the points Dr. Graham McLaren told me to do, starting with standard points and all everything you are going to learn here in this program. So don't give up on that yet. And so I just started to do that. And it is a fact, three sessions for my carpal tunnel syndrome, some exercises, and I was healed. I said, oh my God, this works. Now, for fibromyalgia, you have been having, uh, in my case, I had it for 14 years. It's a chronic situation. And to make chronic situations better, you just need more sessions. It takes longer, which is normal. And the way how I discovered that I was getting better and better is in different ways. First of all, I was able to work more hours. So I would go, I, I live here on a big ranch. I would go outside. I would be working in the garden or with the horses or something. And I, I had just more strength. I could be there longer. I could do more. And I would not get so tired so quickly. So I was like, okay, wow, what's going on? And then one day, uh, Dr. Brian McLaren had told me that I would still need to take the medication the doctor had prescribed me to just not stop from one day on the other. Don't do that. So I still had my little box with Monday morning, midday, and, and, and evening, and so on for the whole week. And then one day I came inside, and it was early afternoon, and I realized I had to, uh, not early afternoon, late afternoon, and I realized I had forgotten to take my pain medication. I don't need my pain medication anymore? Yahoo! And this is how it all evolved. And, and I became stronger and stronger. I had less and less symptoms. And in just a little bit over one month, I was off all my medication. You can't imagine how good it is to feel like that. I was off all my medication, but also because I don't, didn't need it anymore. I, did, I didn't have those stomach aches anymore. I didn't have those digestive issues anymore. I didn't have those cramps in my legs anymore during the night. I slept better. I slept more hours. I slept deeper. And on, on all levels, I was just getting better and better and better and having less and less and less pain. And that is how I got my quality of life back. Now, did it happen in one day? No. Will it happen in one day to you? No. That is why it's so important that you are going to follow this program. And just follow it the way I have written it out and I have made the videos for you. Now, if you've ever done another program with me, you will see there is a lot that, is, that you've already heard. Why is that? Well, it's simple. The way you do it for me, for you, for somebody else, or for any animal, the basic rules are always the same. So the videos will also be the same. How to torch, how long to torch, where to torch, uh, how to combine different um, therapies, for example. What to do, when to do it, how to do it. All these videos are the same for somebody who has fibromyalgia or somebody who has uh, stomach ulcers or a uh, horse with arthritis, for example. Okay, so it, the basis is always the same. What changes in this program is that over time, I'm going to be concentrating more and more about our typical problems 
of pain, of tiredness, of insomnia, of memory issues, the fog or whatever. But all the rest is going to still be the same. You have to torture yourself every two days. You have to stimulate the standard points every two days. And slowly and surely, you are going to be building up on that. So this advanced photonic therapy, how it's called since 2010, saved my life. And since then, I have been passionate to share my story and to share this therapy with others. Because my goal in life is to make a better world with less pain and less suffering. And you are the one I'm concentrating now in this program. I'm looking forward to hear from you. And when you have a problem or there is an issue, just connect with me. You can either send me an email. You can also send me a message through the platform where you are on right now. And give it its time. You need to give it time. Just repeat the points every two days and make sure you are on the right location. That is super important, but you will learn that in the program. Okay, that's it for me for now. Let's go to the next video.